Good morning. I welcome you as we gather to worship here at Crossgate United Methodist Church and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I invite you to stand and turn to your neighbors and greet one another this morning as we should begin this service together. Wonderful, wonderful. Maybe in the process of doing that, you got to see someone you did not know and uh, visit with someone you haven't seen in a while. What a joy it is to welcome you as we gather to worship in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Chris. I'm part of the ministry team here at Crossgates United Methodist, and it's always a joy to have you with us. Uh, we especially welcome you if you're visiting with us for the first time today. Uh, we hope that you will come back and join us again. It's a special time of year to be worshiping together here. I do want to make draw to your attention that in your bulletin there's a yellow card that we call our connection card. And on that, if you uh, are here, please sign in and let us know of your presence here with us. If you are visiting, we'd love to have some contact information. Email is especially helpful uh, to have for you. You'll notice on the QR card, as I mentioned last week, we've changed it just a little bit. And that on the back of the, Q of the connection card, there's this symbol, which is actually called a QR code. Uh, for you if if sometimes people share with me that they didn't bring cash they don't have checks anymore but if we had some way that they could electronically give they would be able to do that well you can scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to a place where you can do just that and you may choose to do that for giving for us here at Crossgate United Methodist Church so that's there and available for you uh, as well as we share together um, it's a joy to, to welcome you here this morning. It's a special season, a lot of great things going on. Uh, tonight we will be also uh, having another special worship service at 6. Um, it's, called, it's a youthful Christmas, and our children and youth once again will help participate in that. They will the next couple of weeks as well. There will be special things going on, including our choir uh, sharing with us the service of lessons and carols that are coming up too. So pay close attention. I do need to say that children and youth who are participating tonight in, in our service, please be here at 4 o'clock. Uh, this afternoon so that we can prepare and get ready and be ready for that as we share together. Well, I think Charles Wally is going to come and share a word as our lay leader of the church and on behalf of Stamp Parish. Good morning, everybody. Um, how many have ever come around the church during the week and see the work going on by our staff? Just raise your hand. You probably felt like you were seeing a bunch of bees swarming. They, they run around, they're very, very busy. They do a lot more than what we could probably make a list of. And I've also heard that Ben and Allison will like hot donuts any morning you want to bring them by. That gets them started along with a cup of uh, Bill Sloop's coffee, so that, they'll, they'll appreciate that. But this time of year is when we ask if you'd like to get, pro provide any funds toward a love offering for our staff. It'd be a token of our appreciation. We would like for you, if you'd like to donate, just make, put on your envelope or your check, uh, love offering for staff, and it'll get to the right place. We need this completed by next Sunday. Uh, you drop it by or give it, just put it in the offering plate, we would certainly appreciate it. But I would like, if the, sta the staff that's here, someone were in early service, if you would stand, please. That's you too, Allison. Anybody else is out there and see? Let's give them a round of applause because the staff does really do work. I appreciate them because they do so much for us and, and there's no really way to thank them but for a love offering, if you'd like to do it just by the next Sunday, we certainly would appreciate it. Thank you. Next Sunday. <clears throat> Next Sunday is coming. 
uh, we will be having our charge conference for our church here at Cross Case United Methodist. And we have the privilege of having our district superintendent, Reverend Vicki White, coming to preach our worship service at 1030 next Sunday. As we will celebrate who we are and what we've been throughout the year during that worship service. And then following the dismissal, we will stay uh, for those who would like to and would, would do that to be a part of our charge conference business. We'll do that real quickly following the dismissal after Reverend White has had an opportunity to preach. So please plan to be here next Sunday and participate that. That is at 1030. We will be also having the 830 worship service as well. So please come and join us for that uh, and be a part of that with us. I also um, need to let you know that there are Advent devotional books that are uh, located either in the foyer or in the in the behind us in the hallway. Please take one and use it during this season uh, as we share together. You'll notice in your bulletin uh, the opportunity to have lights of love and the poinsettias. Uh, to, to be a part of giving in that way, to offer uh, those wonderful ways of sharing in honor or memory of someone. The poinsettias are due on Wednesday of this week. Just bring that to your attention. So please help us by providing poinsettias for our sanctuary uh, as we share together. Um, we also had just a couple of uh, angels left on the angel tree. I'm not sure... They may be gone. If they're, if they're not, please check the tree just to be sure that there, there's none left there and help us in that way as well. Um, I think Allison is needing to make an announcement. She's been kind of vague about that with me, but she's going to share something. Okay. Last year, we had some naturals when we practiced this during um, our Christmas season, but I realized this morning that Chris was not here. Um, to see that practice and to make sure he really sees how to do this. So everybody put a hand up, left, right, it doesn't matter. And do this with me again. There we go. Chris, this is how we ring the Salvation uh -huh. Army bell. <laughs> so on December the 20th, it's a Saturday for our soul Saturday that day, we still have some spots open to ring the bell for the Salvation Army. It is so much fun to be able to sing, to be able to say Merry Christmas and to greet people as they come in and out. We will be at the Walmart um, over in Pearl. We have two entrances, the food entrance and the main entrance. So we need you to come ring um, to help people um, have their Christmas even brighter. So that um, there is a sign up sheet right outside my office on the board. You saw how easy it is. You add a smile to that and that's all you gotta do. So sign up. I'm thinking Mississippi State fans are natural. Bring a cowbell if you need it. Right? And Ole Miss fans can learn. What wonderful ways we have to give back during this season, which is what's meaningful and important about who we are as the church. We give thanks to God for all those many wonderful ways that we share together. I'm glad that you're here and have joined us for worship today.
On the second Sunday of Advent, we relight the candle of hope as we prepare for Christ's birth. The second candle we light this morning is the candle of love, reminding us that God is love. John 16, 33. The angel told Joseph that Jesus was to be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. God loved us so much that he sent his son to come into this world on that first Christmas to be with us. He came to show us how to live that love and offered the greatest sacrifice to all the world. There is no greater love than that. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for loving us even when we may not deserve it. As we wait the magical birth of your son, help us to find more ways to live that love shown to us, to love you with all of our hearts, our soul, and our minds, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. In our Savior's precious name, we pray. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, our Holy One, our love. What a joy it is to be in your presence this day, O Lord, and to celebrate this season of awe and anticipation. We come to praise and to worship you this day for the many blessings, the love and the grace poured out on each of us. For you fulfilled the prophecy came to live on earth with us, taught us how to love others, to live as a reflection of you so that others may see Christ in us. And then you offered us the ultimate sacrifice. As we continue to prepare ourselves this Advent, O God, we come to lay our burdens, 
our sins, our doubts at your feet. Forgive us, we pray, when we get caught up in the craziness that this season can bring and we lose sight of your true way. God, we come in thanksgiving for the gift of laughter and fellowship, seeing the light in the midst of the darkness, the hope in a beautiful song, the joy in a kind word. And in these moments, O oh Lord, we offer our prayers and our petitions to you. For the family and the friends of Ernest Adams, we lift up Fred Long and Carol Standiford, Larry Krill and Homer Nelson, for Gilly Davis and Judy Turner, Lena Smith, Audrey Comfort, Sherry Case, Bill Watkins and Joyce Lyle. We lift up Dallas Jordan and Lori Daniel and Tim Constance. We lift up David Thomas and the death of his father. We lift up Oscar McGure's sister, Frances. Comfort your people, O oh Lord, in the ups and the downs of life and their struggles and their hurts, their patience in waiting and healing. For you are our mighty God and there is nothing we can ask of you that you will not handle. We ask all of this in your most precious name as we pray the prayer you taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We'd like to invite our children to meet Miss Sherry down front for our children's moment. Oh my goodness. Stop. Please stop. Come on down to here, but don't come any further than here. Y'all come to here. Right here. I'm kind of embarrassed. I mean, I, you can't even really get through here. I'm so sorry. I've got a bunch of junk in the way. I tell you what, why, I hate to ask you to do this. I, I know your guests, but before I can really invite you in, I mean, I kind of I need to get some of this up and out of the way. Um, would, would you help me just a little bit? Thank you. Could we, could we put, oh, thank you. There goes my worry, my fear. Oh, what else? Oh, everything. Good. Look at y'all. That was quick. Thank you so much. Now come on up. Come in. Come in. Come on, Sarah. Have a seat. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I really am sorry that I hadn't cleaned up my junk. I had a lot of stuff in the way, didn't I? You don't think so? Well, I'm going to ask you this. Does your room ever look like that at home? Or worse? <laughs> Anybody confess whose room is usually dirty? Times 50. Wow. How many of you also get told by mom or dad, clean that room up? <laughs> Why do they want you to clean your room? <laughs> You think it's weird? <laughs> Freedom. What, what, Chelsea, say it louder, say it louder. Why do they want you to clean your room? So you can walk through it. When I was a kid, I really thought that my mom wanted me to clean my room because she just liked to torture me. I really did. And I had, my bed was kind of pushed over to the side. And so it was close to a wall. So this side of the bed, you could see everything in my room. But on the other side of my bed, against the wall, you couldn't see anything. And nobody ever went over there. So Mama would say, you can't do such and such until you clean your room. I'd go in my room, 
I'd lounge around for a while, play with things, do what I wanted to do, and then I'd hear, I'm coming to check. I'd take all of it, throw it on the other side of the bed, and leave it there. I'm really sorry if I'm creating problems for you at home. <laughs> However, that's what we need to do. Well, Thomas, I learned my lesson one day because first of all, I would throw clothes, like dirty clothes over there because I mean, you know, I didn't want to pick them up and she was coming to check and I really wanted to play. Well, one day I piled my stack so high on the other side of my bed that it actually came up above my bed and mama walked in and she saw and my hiding place was over. She checked there every single time after that. But I really didn't mean to leave my junk out for you today. I'm really sorry I had stuff in the way. I should have prepared the way for you better to come in to our room today. Thank you for helping me pick it up. But you know what you picked up along the way? I mean, you picked up some things that really needed to go anyway. Well, they kind of, they're just kind of empty, but they kind of represent the junk in our lives. And right now in Advent, we are preparing our hearts for Jesus to come in, to be born. And so we need to get rid of any junk we have lying around that we just haven't picked up yet. Chelsea said the reason our parents want us to clean our rooms is so that we can actually walk in there and walk through. I can remember my mother coming in and after I cleaned it up and said, oh, there is a floor in this room. I can see it now. We need to clear out our hearts in the same way so that Jesus can come in. If you have carpet... Still couldn't see it for all the stuff I had on the floor. So what do we need to clear out? It might be things like you picked up my worry that I really should have gotten rid of anyway because God will take care of me. You picked up my fear, anything that I'm afraid of that keeps me from trusting God. You picked up my, oh, there's, oh, you picked up my anger where I'm still mad and upset with certain people and I haven't let it go. All the clutter that's keeping my heart from being ready for God to come in. So maybe in this Advent season, when we clean our rooms this season, which you know is coming, maybe we should think instead about the fact of everything that we're picking up is just like the stuff we need to pick up and clear out of our heart so Jesus can fully come in and be with us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this season. We thank you for your reminder every single year, Lord, that you do desire to come in to our hearts. And Lord, help us to take the time to be still, to meditate, and to think about the things, Lord, that need to go. Help us pick up our junk so that you can come in. In your name we pray. And today we don't have kids' worship, so you can go back to your parents. <laughs>
Our gospel lesson this morning is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. join me as we pray. Lord God, it is a season to rejoice and to give thanks for all that you are and all that you've done in our world and in our lives. We come to Advent and we wait, we watch, we long with hope and love, and we seek to know your birth again anew into our lives. So be with us on this day as we prepare our hearts and our lives for your coming. Lord, speak through me, through your word, and help me to say what you once said, for we pray it in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the Advent season. We look with anticipation and hope to the coming of the Messiah. Last week we talked about the fact that we celebrate with all Israel as they long for the coming day of their Messiah to be there among them. We wait and watch with anticipation 
for that coming. And we also remember that it's not only a promise of what has already happened, but it is a promise of what is to come when the Messiah will return. And so we ourselves wait and watch. This week has been about anticipation. As we shift into the second week of Advent, it's always a wonderful time to shift from anticipation to preparation as we begin to prepare our lives for the coming of the Messiah. I always am, am grateful that we hear about John the Baptizer from one of the gospel lessons that calls us to a reminder to prepare the way, make straight the path for the coming of our Lord Jesus. Mark's gospel jumps right into the, go the good news, the gospel story. There's no birth narrative as in Matthew and in Luke but here in Mark's gospel, Jesus and the words of, of, of God could tell us that, that something new is going to happen. This is the good news that God proclaimed, that Jesus is coming, that something new is about to take place. And so he refers to John, who comes to be the messenger. And the words that he connects are in Isaiah chapter 40 and also Malachi. But Isaiah 40 in particular remind us of this one who's come to prepare the way, to lay the groundwork. Isaiah 40 are familiar words. They say this in its first verses. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We're reminded of the time when Israel themselves were in captivity in Babylon. It's so distinct shifts, such distinct shifts in Isaiah that many scholars call this second Isaiah or the second writing that Isaiah did because the tone shifts from all oh, that you would come down and tear open the heavens and come down and, and change things for us to now God's word comes through the prophet is that you've served your time. Something new is going to happen. There will be one that goes ahead of you to prepare the way. The promise of the return to their own land, that the Babylonian exile would soon be over. And in the midst of this, the words of Mark resonate with the words of Isaiah as the one who comes to prepare the place for us. Israel has paid its, for its sin. A time of preparation is now needed as they make their way back into the promised land. A word of strength in God's word comes in the midst of their human condition. And a word of strength and hope comes from God's presence for the people who will go back to inherit the land. John uses the words of Isaiah to remind the people that it's time for God to do something new. The forerunner of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he proclaims that the day is coming when the Messiah will come. And it's time to prepare yourselves. For us preachers, this is one of our favorite passages to preach from. Because we get to, without any hesitation, say the word, repent, right? John in the wilderness proclaims a message of repentance and forgiveness. That it's time to know who God is, to recognize our own sinfulness, to turn from our ways, to repent of our sin, and to be made whole before God. It's time to make that turn. I, I'll tell you, um, you're catching on a little bit of who I am and what I like and, and things about me. Um, uh, many of you have already caught on to the fact that I love basketball, especially Duke basketball, so it's really the right season 
of the year for some of us. I was so excited to be a part of Upward yesterday and to see all that's going on here in ministry with that. Uh, by the way, if you're not doing something with Upward and would like to, Bill, Bill would certainly like, Bill Barnett would love to sign you up uh, to be a part of that. Um, you're catching on that I kind of like music and I like all types of music. Um, if you were to see my, my, my iPad, I, uh, my iPhone, you would notice that there are several genres included. This morning, the guy said, well, all we need now is some rap music going on. I said, oh, really? What you want to hear? <laughs> uh, Little Lecrae? I mean, I'm good with that. Um, but I have to confess with you, as a Southern boy, occasionally I have to, to have my fix. Growing up in the 70s and 80s, you know, it's hard not to occasionally flip over to classic rock so that I can get my Skinner fixed. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's okay for me to confess that, right? Little Credence Clearwater Revival and the Eagles in their original form are all wonderful things. Uh, when I do that sometimes, I, I wind up on the station where there's some morning hosts that do a lot of interesting things. and. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with their political uh, preference and the things that they're saying, but there's a character that I sometimes hear named Reverend Billy Ray Collins. Uh, yeah, some of you just pegged me for sure right now. Um, Reverend Billy Ray Collins uh, always has wonderful words of wisdom and, and shouts those out um, from the frontage road. Uh, and he uh, always ends his program after he says what he's doing by saying, this is Reverend Billy Ray Collins telling you it's time to turn before you burn. <laughs> when I was growing up, that was a common phrase, especially among my Baptist friends who were trying to save me. <laughs> turn before you burn. <laughs> I don't know that that's God's intention is to scare us or to pressure us into repentance, but I do know sometimes we need to take inventory of our lives. We need to look at who we really are and to see what's there and what's not there and offer to God who we are and what we are and allow God to transform our lives. Repenting is, near, is simply offering our sin to God and allowing God to turn us around and send us on a way that leads to grace and forgiveness and salvation. John's word to the people of his day, even the religious authorities, where it's time to take inventory and repent and ask God for forgiveness because we've not been what we need to be. And so repentance is a part of this season. I know it's more a part of the Lenten season and we'll get there. And you'll probably hear these same stories again. But in this moment, when we look with anticipation to the coming of our Lord, it's time to repent. To allow God to turn us around and head us in the direction toward him. John not only says to the people to repent and find forgiveness of your sins and turn to God, but prepare yourself and your hearts for the coming of the Messiah. It's a time of preparation where the rough places are made plain or straight. Mountains are brought low and the valleys lifted high. And the way before us is made straight. So how are we preparing our hearts for the coming of the Messiah? What obstacles are you encountering as you look into your own life, as you prepare for Jesus Christ to come anew into your life? What are you preparing for? Around our house, there's a lot of cleaning that's taking place, a lot of shifting things around. A lot of putting new things in place so that we can celebrate what's coming. Are y'all doing that at your house too? I mean, I always have to move my prized turkey that's mounted from the coffee table so that the advent wreath can come into place. But I do that willingly because I know it's only for a season. 
But I also do it willingly because I know that this is an important season. Are things in your life being cleaned up and shifted around so that you can make room for the coming of the Messiah? Are you preparing yourself for what's right? We're preparing for so many things there are so many things out there that tell us what we should and should not be doing. The Christmas has become so commercialized that sometimes it's hard to even remember that it's about the birth of Jesus Christ, isn't it? I told him this morning, if I hear the merry bells are ringing one more time, I may just throw up. <laughs> Happy holiday. Oh, the merry bells are ringing. Who cares? I mean, I know that's sentimental to all of us and all of that, but it's really not about Mary Bell's ringing or any other things. Feliz Navidad, Ben says, is his favorite. So play it for him when you see him. <laughs> We've talked about the songs we're about over already. Uh, it's about the preparation of the coming of the Messiah. And too often we think that's a, a, an event that's already happened and so we just make it a holly jolly experience when we should be preparing ourselves for Christ to come and do something new in our hearts and in our lives. That's what Christmas is about. Last week I threw a video on you called The Advent Conspiracy. And I did that to invite you to think differently about what you're preparing for. And about what's taking place around us. And to remember the important things to give with your time, your presence, your gifts. So that God can use you in a new way. So that Christ can come in a new way into your heart. We spend so much on things that are frivolous. And oftentimes miss spending the, most thing, the things that are most important. Like our time with our family. Sharing the love of God with others. What are you preparing for and how are you preparing for it? So John's message reminds us to repent, to allow God to work anew in our lives and to prepare our hearts for his coming again, to find strength and hope in the enduring word of God. That's why we read these words from the prophet over and over and we light candles to remind us that God's word endures. The other call upon our lives is not only to prepare ourselves and our hearts for the coming of the Messiah, but that we're called to prepare the way for others. So in this season, how are you preparing the way for others? John made sure that we understood that this message was not about him or for him or pointing to him. When John was proclaiming the good news, he pointed to the one that was to come, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. As we are preparing in this season as a church and as individuals, are we pointing the way to Christ for others? Are we making it all about ourselves? People are watching us. They see that you have held out to say Merry Christmas and not Happy Holidays. But they're watching to see if you really live a life that gives back to the Christ that you're proclaiming and who you celebrate. Or are you simply still living it to be happy for yourself? Are you preparing for something new to happen in your life? Are you pointing the way to the Messiah for others? and helping prepare the way for them. Is there something in your life that you need to offer to Christ so that he can transform you? What are we preparing for? And how are we doing? it? Will you join me as we pray? Well, God, we give you thanks for the stories of our faith that are ever new for the reminders of the one who went before Jesus named John who call us even today to prepare ourselves for his coming 
God, our hope and our prayer is that you will do something new in us this Christmas. That you will help us prepare for your coming. And that God, some way you would use us to point others to the transforming power and presence of Jesus Christ. Oh God, speak to our hearts and use us, we pray. For it's in Christ's name that we say these prayers. Amen. Our hymn of invitation today is 218. I invite you to stand as we share together in this wonderful hymn of our faith. joy and peace to prepare yourselves for the coming of the Messiah and even as you prepare you point the way for others to see Christ as well go forth empowered to be his people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit